Hi, my name is Taylor Sarsgaard and I chose the water cycle as my research topic. Since I'm an early childhood education major, I wanted to find a topic that elementary students would learn about. In third or fourth grade, I remember learning about the water cycle and I thought it was interesting, especially because of the diagrams that are associated with it. Being a student in grade school learning this material, I was able to learn how water is recycled around the earth. Being a child, I took water for granted and did not realize that water is not lost, but reused all over the world. Water is an important resource which is used to generate home utilities to even manufacturing companies. Yet water is a resource that is used for human consumption. Even though water is used in complex and simple ways, it recycles in a process called the water cycle. The Earth's water is composed of more than 96% salt water, which can be found in the ocean and seas, while the rest is fresh water found in ice caps, rivers, and lakes. There is no beginning or end to the water cycle, which is also called the hydraulic cycle, that continues to reuse the same water. The water cycle has three stages, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation, that allows the cycle to be continuous. Each stage is compelled by the sun to provide heat to help water change states while working together to provide water all over the earth. One of the stages in the water cycle is evaporation. When water turns from a liquid state to a vapor, the process is called evaporation. According to Perlman, the majority of the water that is evaporated comes from rivers, lakes, oceans, and seas all around the world and it then travels to the atmosphere. In fact, water vapor can remain in the air for an estimate of 10 days before it is condensed into clouds. For evaporation to occur, heat from the sun is needed. Heat energy breaks down the bonds that hold the hydrogen and oxygen molecules together, and if the temperature is warmer, evaporation occurs faster than in cooler weather. Water is also evaporated from leaves of plants, which is called transpiration. Essentially, water moves from the root of the plant to the leaves and is then converted into water vapor, which is represented in 10% of water vapor in the atmosphere. Evaporation is important because it completes the water cycle. If water did not evaporate, the earth would not receive rainfall because clouds would not be able to condense in the air. Condensation is another process that occurs in the water cycle. When water vapor rises in the air from evaporation, small particles form into clouds which change the particles into a liquid state. Even though the sky may be clear, droplets are present in the air with the absence of clouds. Perlman uses an example of a glass of water sweating or glasses that begin to fog. For clouds to form, water molecules coalesce higher in the atmosphere where it is cooler. Higher elevations have small amounts of air, which allows less barometric pressure to create heat compared to the higher density at ground level. A relatively smaller amount of air pressure causes a cooler atmosphere higher up which creates an environment for cloud formation. Condensation allows each stage of the water cycle to function. Without it, precipitation would not occur, which means a lack of rain to crops and evaporation would not occur as well. Lastly, precipitation is one of the three stages included in the water cycle. Opposite of condensation, precipitation occurs when water falls from the sky in the form of a solid state, such as snow, sleet, or hail. Water also falls as rain in a liquid state. For precipitation to take place, water molecules in the atmosphere in the form of clouds must combine with dust or salt and collide with other water molecules to create dense molecules. The droplet will fall from the sky if the water molecule has a higher velocity than the speed of an updraft that holds the cloud in the atmosphere. Freeman explains droplets gathering on the surface of the earth and the runoff gathering in glaciers or in aquifers where water can be removed and used as a resource. Trees also collect precipitation which then evaporates into the air to continue the cycle. If precipitation was non-existent, clouds in the atmosphere would contain water from evaporation and soon water would disappear from bodies of water without the droplets to fall back into them. Evaporation, condensation, and precipitation are all stages in the water cycle that are a natural reoccurring event that helps provide resources to life on Earth. Without it, the crops would not produce food, plants would not survive, and all other living creatures would suffer without water. With the sun providing heat, the cycle can become complete as each stage helps the next one. The water cycle is a crucial part of how water is recycled, which helps the Earth function properly.